It's party season, and in today's video, we're making mosaic rings. Whether you call it a statement piece or a revved up cocktail ring. From picking a substrate to tiling, grouting, and finishing off, we'll cover all of it in time for the holidays. Let's get to it. Welcome back, and if you're new here, my name is Julie. And on this channel, we talk about tips, tricks, tools, adhesives, materials, and specific mosaic projects, all to shorten your learning curve when it comes to creating mosaic art. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, please consider subscribing. When you think of mosaic, jewelry probably doesn't come to mind, at least not initially. But actually, mosaic works really well in jewelry. Whether you're using ceramic tesserae or glass, like what I'll show you today, lots of mosaic materials lend themselves well to mosaic rings and jewelry in general. But before we get too far into this, I do want to clarify that I am not making micro mosaic today in this video. You can call it mini mosaic or small mosaic, but micro mosaic is something completely different. It is a very involved, gorgeous form of mosaic. It has many different steps and takes a lot longer than what we're going to do today. I think these rings are so much fun to make and don't be fooled that they're small, therefore they are easy to make. They are a challenge. You are, you are working in a very, very small area. So you have to come up with a design that will fit into a very confined space. I found the challenge exciting and I love how each of the rings turned out. So today I'll show you the substrates that I used as well as the materials, the tiling, grouting, and finishing off. I'll include a list down below in the description of everything that I used today in case you'd like to create some mosaic rings of your own. We've got a lot to cover, so let's get started. I have wanted to make some mosaic rings for quite a while. I'm not really sure why it took me so long. I did buy some substrates and have been holding on to them, I don't know, for years now. And finally, I was like, you know, it's party season. Why not have some statement rings or cocktail rings, whatever you want to call them. I know a lot of us are staying home these days, however, that's not always going to be that way. And whether you're gathering with friends and family for a cocktail party or going out, or if you're going to your child's sports game or just running errands, these rings work well, whether dressed up or down, let's say in a t-shirt and jeans. The substrates I decided on are pretty simple so that the mosaic artwork would be the feature of the ring. I chose large circles and large squares. They're each one inch diameter or one inch by one inch. Keep in mind, there are lots of shape options available. You don't have to go with a square or circle, and you certainly don't have to go with a large bezel like what I selected. These are made of metal and are adjustable around the band, which is really nice and convenient. They'll fit pretty much anyone. You can also find bezels that are sterling silver or 14 karat gold. You'll just have to dig on the internet. The bezels I used are also deep, so to speak, so I can place pieces of glass in the bezel and try to match the top of the glass to the top edge of the ring. Although I'd like to make more rings in the future where the glass is taller than the edge, I think that would be really fun. I decided to prep the substrates ahead of tiling instead of waiting to do it before grouting. This is because I didn't want to get any of the adhesive on the outside of the ring or in the ring band. And we'll talk more about the adhesive in a minute. So I covered the entire ring except for where I would be tiling with painter's tape. This is a tape that adheres well to clean surfaces yet pulls off really easy with no sticky residue left behind. 
and I have to say it worked really well and held onto the rings, especially during grouting. And you'll see what I mean later in the video. It took me about 20 minutes to tape up six ring substrates. It went really quick and I'm so glad I did it ahead of tiling. For the materials, I'm using a mix of stained glass, vitreous glass, glass tile, and beads made from ceramic and a naturally occurring mineral. Don't I sound so sciency? It's a nice mix, and I kept things small in order to not add to the challenge of tiling in a small confined space. I'm smart like that. I relied heavily on using cutoffs from past mosaic projects. I knew this project was coming up and started collecting really small pieces of tesserae months ago. I used to do this so often and got out of the habit of it, and now I'm gonna start doing it again because I wanna make more rings. If you don't have cutoffs, you can certainly cut down larger pieces of tesserae for these rings. Okay, for the adhesive, I'm using epoxy sculpt. I've done a video here on the channel about epoxy sculpt and using it in mosaic, and I'll include a link down below in the description so you can check it out. Epoxy Sculpt is a two-part adhesive, meaning you mix equal parts of part A and part B to activate the material. You have a one to three hour window to work with. This is really good stuff, especially when working with these tiny shards of glass. You'll see what I mean when we get to the fifth ring that I made. But if you'd like to work out your design before you mix up the adhesive, then draw a template on a piece of paper that matches the bezel opening you selected. Work on your paper first with your design before you proceed with mixing up the adhesive and then tiling. To keep my rings level while I'm working, I'm using a velvet ring tray, or it may also be called a ring organizer, it worked really well for me in keeping the rings upright through the curing process. I'll quickly go through the design of each of the rings and I'll also mention any challenges you may wanna look for when working on your own rings. And then after tiling, we'll move on to grouting and finishing off and I've also got some ideas on what you can do with your rings once they're completed. I think we're ready to start tiling. For my first ring, I used a square bezel. I knew exactly what I wanted to do design-wise. I had a bunch of small pieces of green stained glass and vitreous glass that I wanted to include. So I made a color block design using 16 different shades of green. Some pieces are considerably larger than others. Although when I say large, isn't really all that large considering I'm working with a one inch by one inch square. I tried to use pieces of tesserae which didn't require any or much cutting just for the sake of getting into a tiling groove and basically warming up creatively. And it was successful as the tiling went rather quickly. I alternated sizes with mixing in short and long rectangles and squares. There are even some small rectangular slivers of glass. Before I considered this ring done, tiling wise at least, I made sure that all of my glass pieces were level with each other. And then once I was done with that, I let the ring sit for at least 24 hours to fully cure. For the next two rings, I made them the same because I wanted to keep one for myself. Merry Christmas, Julie. <laughs> Thank you. And again, I'm using a square bezel for these rings. I started by putting the epoxy sculpt into the ring bezel, spreading it around with the paddle end of one of my dental picks. You don't spread the epoxy like you would creamy peanut butter or Nutella. Instead, you squash it down with your paddle, going at an angle in the direction you want to spread the epoxy. I hope that makes sense. Or let me say it another way. I'm not spreading the adhesive, I'm mashing it at an angle in the direction I want the adhesive to go. Once I finished that, I started tiling by centering the red porcelain heart. 
Then I cut tiny slivers of white stained glass and white vitreous glass. I was able to get much thinner slivers with the stained glass than with the vitreous glass. And I continued to tile around the heart, making sure my tiny slivers were level with each other because I didn't want any of them to sink down. Not that that would really happen with how light these pieces of glass are and how stiff the epoxy sculpt is, but still, I wanted to make sure I didn't accidentally place or push any pieces lower than where I'd like them to be. And now these heart rings will sit and cure for at least 24 hours before grouting. Moving on to my fourth ring, just like the first three, this one is also a square bezel. I wanted to create a design of black and gray. Very moody and sophisticated, much like myself. <laughs> and with this ring, I decided to try designing in the bezel first, as I knew it was going to be a very tight fit. So I didn't mix up any epoxy sculpt just yet. So I combined mini black glass tiles with thin rectangles of gray stained glass and cubed beads of hematite. It took a bit of time just moving the pieces of tesserae around to get things to fit in the bezel. I knew I could cut down the stained glass slivers and even the mini black glass tiles, not that I wanted to, but there was no way I could cut down the hematite beads without losing their shape or integrity. So I needed to build my design around those hematite beads. And keeping that in mind, my design needed to be kind of loose or fluid so I could fit everything in. But eventually I succeeded, and once I was happy with the design, I removed all the tesserae from the bezel and added the epoxy sculpt for tiling. So basically, because I did the heavy lifting up front, the tiling went very quickly. And now the tiling is complete and this ring will sit for at least 24 hours to fully cure. My fifth ring is a round bezel. Finally, a round ring. I had a design in mind for this one, but wasn't quite sure it would work with the adhesive. You'll see what I mean in a minute. So I started with a round circle of white stained glass. This will be the focal point of the ring. And then I cut teeny tiny rectangles or slivers of red stained glass. I used a few different shades. I stood them up on an end and placed them around the white circle as if they were protecting the white circle. Wow, I'm coming up with a whole story behind the design. Anyways, this took quite a while. I must have been mad at myself that day because, whoa, it took a minute. And not only did it take a while, but I wasn't sure the adhesive would hold on to these little shards in, in keeping them in place. They weren't exactly butted up to each other. As I tiled a row of red shards, I would add a little more adhesive to their base to reinforce things. And once I was done with the ring of red, as we'll call it, around the white circle, I started filling in the rest of the background with a muted turquoise stained glass. I wanted there to be a distinct, obvious, clean divide between the ring of red and the turquoise background. And just like with the previous rings, once I was done tiling, I let it sit for 24 hours before grouting. My sixth and final ring is also a round bezel. The design is nothing like what I had in mind initially. But I just started playing around with the materials I wanted to use and came up with something I liked even better. Sometimes you've just got to go with the creative flow. So I started by adding the epoxy sculpt to the bezel and then added three ceramic beads to mimic flower petals. 
I then cut a small circle of yellow stained glass to place in the center of the flower petals and I cut three small green leaves also from stained glass. Then I got to work cutting small pieces of white stained glass and vitreous glass to fill in the background. I've been using a lot of small pieces of glass on these rings, but you certainly don't have to. You could definitely use larger pieces, so to speak. And in the case of this ring, I wanted the design in the center to be the focal point, which mean I had to work with smaller pieces to fill in the background. And yep, you guessed it, once all of the tiling was done, I let it sit here for 24 hours to fully cure. The rings have been sitting here for 24 hours and they are fully cured. Epoxy Sculpt is pretty amazing stuff. Although I've already prepped all of the substrates ahead of time for grouting, there is one ring which I only want to partially grout, and it's this one right here. I don't want the area of the white circle and red stained glass to be grouted. I think the design would get lost in the grout. I want to keep the texture grout free. So once again, I'm using my blue painter's tape to tape off the area really well where I don't want any grout to go. Okay, now everything is taped off and I'm ready to mix up some grout. As you can see, these rings are small so it won't take much grout to finish the job. I decided to grout all of them with dark gray grout. I think the color will work well with the colors and designs I came up with. Keep in mind, you don't have to grout your rings. Depending on your design and personal preference, you could keep them ungrouted. In fact, I'd like to make some more rings in the future which are kept ungrouted. But for the materials I'm using in these rings I'm making today, I wanted them to be grouted. They needed it. As you can see, the painter's tape is holding on nicely so that I avoid scratching up any of the metal substrates. Now that all of them are grouted, I'll let them sit and dry for about five to 10 minutes and then I'll come back and clean them off. Okay, the rings have been sitting here drying and are ready to be cleaned off. I've still got the painter's tape on the outside of the rings. You wanna keep that on until you're completely done with the grouting. I like to clean off the grout, especially with small pieces like these, with dry paper towels. I gently rub back and forth and also in a clockwise, counterclockwise motion to get all of the grout off of the glass surface. Sometimes you'll need to dig out the grout in certain recessed areas should a piece of tessera accidentally get turned, bumped, or sunk down during curing. Toothpicks are soft and gentle enough to do that without digging a crater in your grout line. And just continue on with the grout removal until all of the rings are completely cleaned off. Now that the grouting is done, it's time to remove the painter's tape. I like to carefully use a straight edge razor blade to get the ends of the tape started hoping that in the process I don't cut myself. And I'll just continue on with carefully removing all of the tape from the rings. Now that the tape has been removed, there are a few more things you could do with your rings. One option would be to seal the grout on your rings. And I've done a video here on the channel all about how to seal your mosaic artwork. And I'll include a link down below in the description so you can check it out. Now, obviously these rings aren't like a fine gemstone ring where you could wear it while washing dishes, going swimming, or taking a shower. This is a ring you wouldn't wear in those types of situations. You wouldn't want to submerge this type of ring in water, for example. But sealing the grout would be just a little bit of insurance to keep your grout looking fresh, especially if you use a lighter colored grout. 
A second option would be to cover your mosaic with resin. And yes, you guessed it, I've done a video here on the channel all about how to cover your mosaic artwork with resin. I'll include a link down below in the description so you can check it out. Covering your mosaic with resin would be a permanent way to seal in your artwork. You would need to be super careful though, as resin does have a tendency to run quickly. So my advice, if you wanted to add resin on top of your mosaic work, would be to tile your mosaic so that your tessera was below the edge of the bezel and add a very, very small amount of resin slowly to give it time to spread over the top of your mosaic artwork but not too much that it fills up quickly and goes over the edge of your bezel. I would use an eyedropper to do this just to make sure you go slow and don't add too much. Remember, resin is incredibly self-leveling. Go slow with the resin, but the result would be gorgeous. I'll include a list down below in the description of all the substrates, materials, tools, adhesive that I used in today's video in case you'd like to create some mosaic rings of your own. Question of the day, let me know down in the comments if you've ever made any mosaic rings or mosaic jewelry for that matter, I would love to hear. Thank you so much for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up as it really does help my channel and subscribe if you haven't already. Click the bell notification so you never miss a single upload and let me know in the comments if there's something you'd like me to cover in a future video. I'll see you soon. Bye. Wow. Like, so much of me is missing. <laughs> Better? There's like so much of my body missing there. Okay. You can get Sir, you know what I was gonna say? I was doing so well that there were Thor. Really? Somebody is backing up their car. Beep 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 beep. Don't you know I'm recording a video here? Come on, people. Yes. That's right. I actually made six rings overachiever. More like addicted because they're so much fun. Bam, what? Come on, Julie. Oh, oh, geez. If you're looking for more mosaic inspiration, you can check out one of these two videos. Until then, see ya.